Welcome to the Positive Spiritual Living Podcast, brought to you by Unity on the Bay. This is your positive path for spiritual living. I have been privileged to be present for three different experiences of birth in my life. The first one was in 1991, my son Aaron. The second in, pardon me, did I say 1981? 19, he probably wishes it was 91, but. And then my daughter came along in 1985, and then my granddaughter in 2010. And how many of you have actually been present for a birth? Obviously, the mothers have. Um, it's quite an experience, isn't it? And I have to tell you, though I was never raised to believe that new life coming into expression uh, was ever tainted with something that we call original sin, if you've been in the presence of a newborn, it's a little bit difficult to get your uh, arms around that understanding, not that you would want to, but uh, that somehow this purity and this light and this love is coming into the world just by virtue of its birth, um, stained by sin. Of course, in unity, we do not believe that. We believe that all of us arrived on the planet not in original sin, but in original blessing. And this is true because we are made in the image and likeness of God, and it's most easy to perceive the image and likeness of God in the eyes and in the presence of a newborn child. We love little babies, and one of the reasons that we love them is because they are beautiful and precious, but also because they remind us of aspects within ourselves that perhaps we have forgotten. Aspects like innocence, aspects like purity, aspects like wonder and humility. We are able to perceive those in a newborn child perhaps more easily than we can perceive them in ourselves. And you may ask, well, why is that? And what happened if I was born in original blessing? How did I get so messed up over the years? Well, our good friend here at Unity on the Bay, Don Miguel Ruiz, has shared with us some words to help us understand what happened after we arrived in original blessing through our birth. He says, children believe everything adults say. We agree with them, and our faith is so strong that the belief system controls our whole dream of life. We didn't choose these beliefs, and we may have rebelled against them, but we were not strong enough to win the rebellion. The result is surrender to the beliefs with our agreement. In other words, we arrive as original blessing, and remembering that Christmas is the season of birth. That's our fresh, alive, and natural state, original blessing. But then we begin to move into the realm of what Ruiz refers to, and you've heard me use this term before, human domestication. You see, society has established certain standards, certain ways of being, certain ideas about what is right and wrong and good and bad, and we are then expected to conform to those ideas. We talked a little bit about that last week. How important it is then to realize that the real celebration of the Christmas season, my friends, is, yes, to celebrate the birth of Jesus so many years ago, but also to recognize that even in this moment right now, there is something pressing within you that is awaiting birth in your own awareness. That is the remembrance of the spiritual reality of who you are. And I can tell you this, it's really nothing the world has told you that you are. Yes, we walked into it. Yes, we accepted the beliefs. Yes, they became a part of our superimposed identity, but they are not the ultimate spiritual reality of who we are. We are made in God's image and in God's likeness. So Christmas is about that remembrance and allowing that remembrance to flourish within our own consciousness, which means that you and I, this coming week, should be seeking every opportunity we can to see the world, to experience the world, to taste the world as though we were still a little child. Because you know what, my friends? The reality is this. There's a part of you 
And there's a part of me that has really never grown up that has never really accepted a single word about the process of our human domestication. There's still a child within us. And Jesus told us quite specifically in the book of Matthew, the 18th chapter, verses 1 through 4, he says, At the time, the disciples came to Jesus saying, What is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? You know this one. What is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And calling to him a child, he put him in the midst of them and said, Truly, I say to you, unless you turn and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Whoever humbles himself like this child, he is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Unless you turn. And become like children. Turn. That word is important. It means to turn away from the ideas, the definitions, and the understandings about who you are. Turn away from those thoughts, those concepts that the world has given you, and turn toward the remembrance of what you were when you first arrived on the planet. And that was original blessing. The greatest gift you'll ever get this Christmas is the recognition and the remembrance that you are still that original blessing. You are not what the world has told you you are. You see, my friends, this is the whole foundation of the life and the teaching of Jesus Christ. Now, we turned it into a grand and glorious religion called Christianity, but the reality is he was just trying to wake us up. As he had awakened, he realized through his own awakening, he then had a sacred and holy responsibility to let the light of himself as an original blessing move out with power and grace and beauty into the world so that it could illumine others. Christmas is a season of illumination, a season of remembrance, and we all know if we're in the midst of children during the holidays, it is a time for children. So let's take a moment this morning to look at some of the qualities that are living within you, within me, right now, though perhaps forgotten. And the first one perhaps is the most important. It has to do with innocence. Innocence. You can look at a little child and tell that child is innocent. That child did no wrong that beautiful, pure infant, you contain that same innocence within you. You are, and actually, before I say this, I want to take a moment because these are the most powerful words I'm going to share with you this morning. And you know, everything I share with you, I'm sharing with myself, so I'm listening too. You are not guilty. You are are not guilty. Now, you may say, well, I know I'm not guilty. I haven't done anything wrong. But you have to go deep with this, my friends, because part of that human domestication is the inclination to convince us that we did something wrong. We're not really sure what we did that was so terrible, but we know we did something that was terrible, and we know that punishment is lurking around every corner because we are guilty. You are not guilty. And so whenever you're out in the experience of your day-to-day reality and you may feel a pang of guilt within you, remember to make this statement to yourself, I am not guilty. Guilt is an invention designed to control populations. And so you were given that understanding of yourself as guilty as a means of controlling you to convince you that you did something wrong. You don't know what it is. You're going to pay a price for it now or after you die. So you live in what? Fear. You're living in a constant state of fear. And Jesus is telling us on his birthday and every day, scratch, misperception, misunderstanding, fake news. (laughs) You are not guilty. God did not create guilt. God did not create shame. And God is not about to wait. You know, everybody says, well, I do everything right, but they don't do anything right. And yet they're living a better life than I am. So then the power and control authorities come along and say, well, that will happen after they pass away. But you can rest assured they'll pay the price. There's no price to be paid. The price has been paid, yes, through Jesus, through Jesus' 
recognizing within himself that he was not guilty and then allowing that light to shine forth to us right now in this room this morning. I am not guilty. I am not ashamed of who I am. I am a child of infinite, unconditional love. I am grateful to be created in the perfection of God. I am not guilty. Will you say that with me? I am not guilty. The jury is in. You're all off the hook. You should be able to celebrate Christmas like never before because guilt and shame and fear have been lifted away. The next childhood attribute that we possess, though perhaps not in our current awareness, is that of wonder. I remember my son was born December 9th, 1981, and Christmas was around the corner. The tree was already up. Um, And one of my favorite things to do with Aaron as an infant was to put him in this little cradle and slide him right under the tree because I always said he was my Christmas present. So I'd slide him under the tree and then I would get down on the floor next to him and together we would look up at the lights on the tree. And I'll tell you, I could see in his eyes the sense of childlike wonder that was present as he was looking at those lights. And it was as though I was looking at them for the very first time myself. They were more than electrical lights plugged into a strand wrapped around an evergreen, my friends. Much more. They were little tiny sparkling miracles. That's what they became. They became that because I saw clearly beyond any Christmas light that I had ever seen before. I was looking at those Christmas lights as though I had never seen a light ever in my life, and they were bright, and they were brilliant. And I'm here in this room this morning to tell you that every moment of your life as you awaken, you can begin to see circumstances, individuals, and objects as though you have never seen them before. And the moment you begin to see with fresh eyes, eyes of wonder, as though you were being delightfully surprised by the revelation of something for the very first time, ever, you'll begin to change your position in terms of how you live your life. You will not be going around saying, I know what that is. I've seen that a million times before. You'll be looking at everything as though you had never seen anything before. You will not be bringing your past experience into the situation. And when you see everything as it is right now in this present moment, it becomes alive It becomes charged, supercharged with magical wonder like you've never seen before. We are right now in this moment and every day toward Christmas walking around in a veritable field of miracles, but we have desensitized ourselves to it by accepting a number of false beliefs that cloud our vision and do not let us realize that every moment you take a breath and every moment your heart beats, you are living a miracle. And you're with a lot of other people who are living miracles too. You see, it's all in perception. It's all in changing definition. It's all in deciding, I'm going to see this differently. I'm not going to take a single experience or individual in my life for granted anymore. I'm going to wake up this Christmas. I'm going to see as the Christ sees. And that is fresh, alive, and new, and vital, and beautiful, and splendorous. In each and every moment, I do not allow assumptions from the past to cloud my present experience. I see everything in this moment for the very first time. I am constantly curious and delightfully surprised. How are you today? Well, I'm constantly curious. Now, you see, people will, of course, think that you have lost your mind. But the reality is that you have found it. You are no longer seeing behind clouded visions. You're seeing the truth. And the truth, my friends, will always set you free. The third childlike quality I want to share with you this morning is humility. I personally am not particularly fond of trying life circumstances. Anybody enjoy trying life circumstances, difficulties, adverse conditions, it is possible for you to enjoy them when you recognize why they are in your life. It is possible for you to appreciate them when you recognize why they are in your life. They are in your life to remind you that you are a humble individual, 
that you are not living your life as an independent agent on your own. Your life is being lived by the same intelligence, the same power, and the same grace that is orchestrating an entire cosmos. So through humility, through those tough and trying circumstances in life that sort of bring us down to this level of total humility and a sense of powerlessness, we begin to open out the way through which the real power that we are, the power that was given to us as original blessings created in the image and likeness of God can start to gently move through us, and before you know it, it starts to move powerfully as a surge in your life, and it's power that's not coming from your own understanding of your accomplishments, your your, um, greatness in the world, but the greatness that is working through you. We're here to be designed as living channels through which the power and the presence of God moves through us. And we can do that as long as we bow in humility to that power and don't run around trying to act like we know everything, which is a tendency of the human race, you know. And we're here on this Christmas uh, holiday to set that aside and realize that we do not need to fill ourselves with inflated images of superiority. I know who lives my life, and I walk with a meek spirit, trusting in my personal guidance and divine direction and purpose. Can you hold that thought with me through the holidays? Meek and mild like a little child. Hmm, That's poetic, isn't it? Meek and mild like a little child. So my friends, as we make the way toward Christmas Day, I encourage you, and I know you're all very busy with a host of different Christmas time activities, to ask yourself, what do I really want for Christmas? Remember that song? All I want for Christmas is my So I'll take two front teeth. <laughs> I like my teeth. But more than that, what I'm asking for is a new way, a new dream, a new remembrance, the ability to wake up on Christmas morning, if not sooner, and then every succeeding morning of my life. And I want to hold this vision for you, to wake up in the remembrance of who you are, to be okay with walking out into your world as a little child, with all of the innocence, with all of the wonder, with all of the humility that you can muster. And I guarantee you this, my friends, you'll begin to realize between now and Christmas, there is a reason why we are biblically referred to over and over and over and over and over again as children of God, not full-grown adults, not aunts, uncles, grandparents, fathers, or mothers. We are children of God. And that mindset of the little child that we arrived on this planet with can come now back into our full remembrance and allow us to move out into this world as agents of what the divine has sent us here for. And that is to walk every moment in wonder, experience everything that comes into your life, not with the idea that you know what it's all about or you know what it means or what it needs to be, but with this innocence, with this beauty, with this wonder, with the eyes of a child. And you will see that when you awaken on Christmas morning, your world is always a veritable field of miraculous events, activities, and individuals. Now that is a present you're going to want to open not only on Christmas Day, but every day of your eternal life. God bless you. It's time for our prosperity opportunity, and that is your opportunity to give as you have received. This time of year is a wonderful chance for us to remember that the good that you share with Unity on the Bay blesses not only those individuals who are within these walls right now or at any time, but truly blesses the whole community of Miami. I would encourage you this morning um, um, to stop by the table in the foyer. 
um, for Angels Everywhere. This is an ongoing annual program here at Unity on the Bay where you can participate in making sure that joy comes into the lives of children and adults, individuals, families who might otherwise not have the joy of receiving a gift on Christmas morning. You can participate and make this a living reality in those children's lives and those families' lives. So please take a moment to stop by the Angels Everywhere table in the foyer before you leave today, and you will support us in not only being a light that shines brightly here at Unity on the Bay, but far beyond these walls to many individuals whose lives will be blessed on Christmas morning because of you. As our ushers come forward, I remind you that you have the power to bless. That means that right now in this moment, you can infuse this gift that you are giving with your love, with your gratitude, and with the true spirit of Christmas. So let's take a moment to bless our gift and affirm together our offertory statement. Divine love that I am blesses all that I give and all that I receive. And all the people said, thank you, God. Together, thank you, God. Amen. We hope you enjoyed this episode of the Positive Spiritual Living Podcast, brought to you by Unity on the Bay, a spiritual community located in Miami, Florida. Unity on the Bay is supported by the generosity of its community. If you'd like to make a donation or learn more about Unity on the Bay, please visit unityonthebay.org. You can also follow Unity on the Bay on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter for even more positive spiritual inspiration. Until next time, thanks for listening and many blessings. Namaste.